All right, guys, it's your boy Nate Motivates here with another tutorial. Got my man Dylan here. Dylan been coming to me now since he was about a, like a sophomore, freshman in high school. Now graduated, young grown man out here in these streets. And as you can see, he has the crazy moulin. Moulet, we've been nurturing this thing for some time now, but my man came and told me it's, it's time, no mas. No more, man. No more? We're gonna uh, keep the length on the top, gonna slick it back, go down to about a two on the sides and clean me up a little bit. Okay, so you, you looking to get your poppy shampoo on, huh? Yes, sir. All right, so you wanna, you wanna keep majority of the length up here, but you wanna bring in the sides with a number two? Yes, sir. All right, and you wanna keep it connected. You don't wanna undercut, right? Correct. You wanna keep it connected here at the, the ridge. And then probably add a little flavor, man. What you think about a little taper on the sides in the back? Sounds good to me, man. Sounds good? You the man. All right, guys, listen. Again, we're gonna keep most of the length on the top, two on the sides, keeping it connected, not an undercut, utilizing the DFS formula, and then we're gonna taper out the sides and the back. All right, guys, first thing we're gonna do first is we're gonna go ahead and wet the hair. All right, we wanna go ahead and wet the hair because we wanna separate the top from the sides. And one of the things that totally transformed my career in the sense of doing shear cutting was learning and starting to utilize the DFS formula powered by OP45, created by the man himself, Barbara Josh OP. And what it did is simplify precision cutting for me. Not gonna give away too much, all right, because we got over 250 hours of online education for you guys. We're actually gonna just part the hair at the parietal on each side, because this is basically what we like to call our transition zone. Your lines don't necessarily have to be absolutely perfect. Each person has a different hair growth. All right, as you can see right here, he has like sort of like a calic area in the front. Most people would do it directly at the parietal right there, leaving this out. With his hair growth pattern, I wanna include that because naturally the hair falls down there, all right? So that's what I'm actually gonna separate and start my guideline, all right? And not necessarily will always create the most perfect horseshoe either. In school, that's what you're basically taught. You wanna create the perfect horseshoe on everybody. That's not the case. Everybody has a different head shape, so therefore, Every client to me won't have the exact perfect horseshoe. And then back here in the back, just identifying the calic area. Again, separating the hair where it naturally separates at. I'm actually gonna start cutting the hair at the parietal. Since I know we're gonna be doing a two on the side, my natural number guard when it comes to my hand to the head is typically about a three to a four. And don't be scared to saturate the hair with water. An easy way for you to identify where the parietal's at when it comes to your client is stick a comb in the back of your client's head. Try to find the middle of it, and wherever the comb is at, at a point where it's straight up and down, all right, the moment it starts to bend by sliding your finger down, as you can see there, is the moment where you know that's where the parietal's at. All right, so about, say about like another inch above where your finger is stable and the comb is straight. The moment you move your finger down and it starts tilting, that's where you know your parietal's at. So for him, it'd be like right about there. My fingers are touching his head at the parietal. My next section, I'm gonna grab some hair that I just cut, because your hair clearly identified the hair that you cut and the hair that you need to cut. I start in the middle and I work all the way around one side. For me, I'm not gonna lie, when I first started barbering, cutting straight hair kind of petrified me. You know, I wasn't too hip to it. I didn't have too many straight hair clients at that time, but between mannequin work, between investing in my education, I started to feel more confident with it because I actually started practicing where I was weak at. If I could give you some advice to new barbers or existing barbers is, don't be scared to invest in what you don't know. To me, you wanna treat your career like a toolbox, right? You wanna put as many tools in there as possible, not necessarily because you need it at that point in time, but you'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it, right? To me, I'd much rather have gained the education in cutting straight hair, then not because I, I was like, man, eventually if I want my business to grow more, I can't just corner myself and just learn one type of hair, or one type of haircut. So how long you been growing the moulet, bro? So I haven't cut the back in probably a year, man. A year. So I'm gonna come in now with my baby, this rose gold FX1, and I'm gonna start with the four first. I'm gonna start here, hold the hair down at the parietal. Let's come up and through. No more moulet, bro. <laughs> bro, your head just shrunk. <laughs> tremendously just now. And as you guys can see, as I'm coming up, I'm going up and through the guy I just set with my shears, up and through, oh, all right? Shit. You can see they can blend right into there for the most part. If we have to do some more refinement later, that's okay. But for the most part, as you guys can see, it's going right in to the guy I just set, going no higher than his parietal. That's why I set my guy line at. <sighs> that's crazy. <laughs> Go right to the two. And same concept, I'm coming, I'm not taking it all the way up here. All right, right off the shape of his head. As you can see, the shape of his head sits that so. So my clipper is gonna move in that same motion. You see where the comb starts disconnected from his head right here at the parietal? That's exactly where my clipper is gonna come off his head. So in a more slower motion, the clipper looks like this. Remove the comb. 
I'm doing the same thing. All right, you're yeah, nice and clean. So when I get done with this number two bar, I'm gonna turn them around, but hey, this is something you definitely wanna keep be mindful of, when, especially when you're doing a big transformation. You know what I mean? You wanna get the look that they're looking for. You don't wanna rush it, and you wanna move efficiently. That's the two. Yeah, let's do a one for sure. Yep. Say less. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a one close, and I'm gonna leave room to fade the one, into the one and a half. So I already got a two. Keep it like a mid fade almost. Holding his ear down so I don't catch his ear. Boy, we got a weird growth pattern back here in the back. Look at this. Hair go down. <laughs> so I have to identify that growth pattern and now cut it in the opposite direction to get my desired length that I'm looking for. And basically just connecting the dots. And since I know I'm already gonna taper that and I got my clipper in my hand already, I'm gonna go ahead and set my initial guideline for his taper already. Again, about efficiency. And go ahead and clean the bottom of his neck up in doing so. Again, it's all about being efficient, guys. Now all you gotta do is grab your shaver, ball that out. All right, and you see how that works? We got down to our desired length that he wants. All right, and now we're gonna go ahead and just fade it up. Because again, we did not want to undercut. He wanted to keep the top, but he wanted it to be blended and connected. And I think that's something that we gotta make sure we identify when it comes to cutting long straight hair, when they're cutting it off, asking them, do you want it connected or do you like a disconnect? And even better, ask them to bring you a picture. I think a pic picture is a great reference point, especially if you cut transformation cut or cut someone for the first time. I highly recommend it. That way you guys get to learn each other. All right, I typically like using my one and a half halfway if you see my previous videos, but when I'm cutting or debulking someone's hair like this, I might do, do some lever play, which is sometimes necessary. I could have did my one open, I know, but playing is safe and wanting to fade this up accordingly and efficiently, I decided to fade down and go to my one and a half guard. I'm gonna come in with the one all the way open. That initial guideline was all the way closed, so I'm gonna come in all the way open and knock out that bottom faint line right here. I'm gonna do less talking, more cutting. Which is pretty self-explanatory, as you guys can see, it's bringing that line all together right there. Drop the halfway. I usually like using the corner of my guard at times to get some darker areas, because you don't always need to attack your guard line full guard, all right? There's gonna be some areas that blend out a lot quicker, a lot easier than others. And this face coming together nicely, man, nicely. So Dylan, man, you've been coming to me as long as you've been coming to me. What do you think is one of the main reasons why you've come to me so long? The best results and they're consistent, man. Best results and consistent, I appreciate that, brother. Absolutely. So Barbers, any of you guys listen to this tutorial, man, and it's not to toot my own horn, but I think a lot of people undervalue being consistent, man. Being consistent with your schedule, being consistent with your results, just being consistent all the way around as a business owner. You I mean, if you're operating as a business owner, I mean, you're owning every part of your business. Being consistent should be one of the top priorities in your business. That comes to showing the work on time, that goes to, you know I mean, getting the desired education needed to supply your clients with the desired look that they're looking for. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna grab my trimmer and I'm gonna go ahead and just start shaping and pinning this haircut into a frame. Starting off with lining up the neck first, pulling on the ear with my pointer finger. There's no need for me to come all the way in here and be extra cosmetic with it. I feel I like to follow the shape of his head and put it right there. So I like to keep it somewhat as natural as possible. If I have to get cosmetic with it, I will. But for the most part, there's no need. You can see that's the nice sharp line. I'm gonna come in with my rose gold shaver. All right, take it up to that, right underneath that guideline. Don't make it hard on yourself. Don't take your shaver all the way up to that guideline, all right? Give yourself a little wiggle room. That way you're not having to take out another line. All right, about a finger's width guideline. I'm gonna drop it down to the middle. And close. I'm gonna go ahead and come in with my half, halfway, and this should blend it right into that. That's why it's important to know your, like, your measurements and your, have a system in place when it comes to your fading. That way, again, it can make you more efficient. If you know all your steps and know where your, guard, where your guards fit at, that'll make you more efficient and actually quicker with your clients. And not so much quick as in trying to hurry up and getting them out, but getting them done in an efficient, timely manner, consistently. Remember I told you earlier, it's about consistency. All right, guys, got the trimmer back in my hand. Just wanted to clean up this, the neckline real quick, just a little bit more after fading. My pointer finger on the ear, utilizing like as an axle, clean up around the ear. I'm just gonna line up the back of the beard while I have trimmer in my hand, clean it up. I'm gonna start at the top. I like to say A, B, then C. All right, I'm gonna start off my initial guideline line right there at the very top. All right, keep it as natural as possible without getting too cosmetic. Start at the bottom where the hair becomes more dense at. Same thing here, pull the ear down.
Doing the same thing we did on the other side, on this side, guys. Again, he doesn't want to cut too much of the length on the top, but the way for us to make this connect with the sides properly, we're going to split the hair right down the middle. Again, this is one of the strategies used by and taught by the DFS formula. I'm not going to give you guys too much free game. Make sure you guys click the link in the description below. All right, if you guys want some more on having access to over 250 hours of online education when it comes to the DFS formula and precision cutting, we're going to utilize the guideline that we created earlier in the haircut all right, to connect the top now. So if you remember, that guideline is right there from our parietal. And we're going to use the guideline underneath it as our guideline to cut the hair so it can connect to the sides. And again, trying to keep it at chest level because I don't want it to sit as heavy. So I'm gonna pull my comb, get the tension that I need desired, and I'm just gonna place my fingers as so, so it holds the hair in place, and then I'll cut there. If you ever feel like you're getting lost in it, guys, take a peek. The hair's right there. So when you grab it, you can still get yourself right back on track. As you guys can see, I'm just gonna pull out, angle it down, Connect that with the front, all right? Right there. And yes, we're not taking much off the top. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure it's all even. So with us doing this technique, we've created now a little peak. When you start seeing the hair fall off right there, see where the hair is falling off at right there? And this is still there. This is the little peak that we created by connecting the sides to the top. You see, I have that little peak. All I'm doing is gonna take that peak off right there and again, you can see it's barely taking anything off, but that little bit is now gonna connect the top to the sides even more. And I don't wanna get too much into the sides because if I start grabbing here, all right, that's, that'll negate everything that we just did as far as connecting the sides to the top. Oh, hell yeah. Come on, dog, what you thought? What you thought? Don't peek. Don't be looking over there. That's the thing, y'all. I, I gotta put something on your thing because they be looking too early. All right, guys, so as you can see, I'm gonna blow dry it, but for the most part, you see, how connected that is already. Is there some areas I can refine? Of course, I can refine a little bit right there, but you got the general consensus and general understanding of how you connect the top to the sides. I'm gonna go ahead and put some. The best clay out there in the market. All right, 245 indestructible clay, man. For me, this is a great product, especially for long straight hair. Whether you're looking to texturize your hair or whether you're looking for a nice, and smooth, slick back, whether it's a wet look or a dry look or something in between, I feel as though this clay can help you get that desired look. Our product with heat swells up the hair. So it's either gonna insinuate the texture of someone's hair or it's gonna insinuate the flow of someone's hair. And in this particular situation, I wanna insinuate the flow of the hair. So I'm gonna massage the product into his hair, evenly distribute it in my hands. And one thing I know about him, he does like his drier look. But if he wants a wet look at the end of it, I can always add additional product. But this is how it would look if we did no blow drying and we left it as such. Medium speed, medium heat. All right, and I'm just gonna blow dry the hair in the direction I want it to go. Shout out to Barbara Josh LP with this fire vent brush. And again, blow drying the direction of the hair that would like the hair to go. I know we don't want just a flat look on him, so I am gonna lift it up here in the front, up just a tad bit, kind of giving it the form. And you guys can see, how one side of the hair looks when it's blow dried almost all the way, and how it looks without it being blow dried. That's the difference when it comes to our product. It can provide you the insinuation when it comes to the flow, or it can provide you that nice textured type of wet look, versatility when it comes to our clay. After I do heat, I like to go ahead and blast it with cold so that I can give it a hold look, all right? I'm not truly done all the way blow drying it yet. I had to learn with blow drying, you gotta have patience. It's gonna give you the desired look, but it does take some work. It takes women so long to do their hair sometimes. So we gotta understand this process right here. Look at all that hair, man. You can make a carpet with that. Oh, okay. I forgot what the back of my head looked like, dude. Yeah, bro. It definitely shrunk your head size. Mm-hmm. Then you can see, like I said, still got some movement in your hair. You know what I'm saying? That, that's what it dry. Fire. Yep. Fire. Cool. 